So um, before we get to questions, we're going to talk a little bit about the news story that has really been tearing up the social media and, and all the headlines recently about the low-carb diet being better than the low-fat diet. All right, so this is the citation of the actual study, um, the effects of a low-carbohydrate and low-fat diet. So it's a randomized controlled trial published just a few days ago. And you may have seen headlines like this one. This was in the New York Times, September 1st. They say a call for a low-carb diet that embraces fat is the headline. And then it says people who avoid carbohydrates and eat more fat, even saturated fat, lose more body fat and have fewer cardiovascular risks than people who follow the low-fat diet that health authorities have favored for decades, a major new study shows. Now, when the New York Times publishes this kind of headline, you've probably seen it in newspapers and publications and online everywhere. And that's pretty much happened. That happens almost every time. This and, and people often don't get beyond the headline in the first paragraph. So I want to I, I want to get behind the headline, beyond the headline first paragraph, and talk a little bit about the diets that they used in this study. So it was a randomized controlled trial. They had two arms. One arm um, was low fat, the other was low carb, quote unquote low fat. Um, at the top of this slide, you can see the low fat. The low fat arm was instructed to eat less than 30% of their total calories from fat, about 55% from carbohydrate. The low carb arm, their instructions were to have less than 40 grams per day of digestible carbohydrate, which basically is total carbohydrates minus uh, fiber intake. They had no other restrictions on calorie intake, so it was sort of eat, eat whatever you want as long as you follow these guidelines. Now, they did this for one year and then published results. And there were some impressive changes, in my opinion, in the course of one year. Um, so if you look, for example, at overall energy intake, both the low carb diet and the low fat diet were eating about 2000 calories a day. And over the course of the next 12 months, um, the low carb diet and the low fat diet, in fact, decreased their overall energy intake by 25%, okay, by about 500 calories. So that's quite a lot. The low carb group um, decreased their calorie intake a, a, a shade more. They took in fewer calories. How about if you look at all their calorie intake, how about the amount of calories from carbohydrates? So the low carb group, they started out baseline here, taking in about 48% of their energy as carbohydrates. They dropped that quite a bit. So they, they, did, it, they did avoid carbohydrates in general. Um, they dropped it from 48% of their diet to 34% of their diet, a drop of 14. The low fat group was about 46% of calories from carbohydrate, and that increased as they avoided fat. That increased to 54% of, uh, of their total um, so, uh, calorie intake. So you see it's approaching their guideline that they started out with. Protein-wise, we know uh, they, interestingly, this, both groups were eating a fairly high protein. You've taken the certificate course. You know that 17% of total calories from protein is a high number. Um, and over 12 months, the low-carb group uh, got much higher, up to 23% of their, all their calories from protein. And interestingly, um, the low-fat group also, you know, relatively, as a percentage of their total calories, the low carb group increased their protein intake as well. Here's a bigger difference, okay? The low carb group increased their fat intake as a percentage of total calories, okay? I'm not talking about absolute numbers, just the relative percentage, from 32% to 40%. And the low fat group dropped their relative fat intake from 34% of their total calories to 30%. Okay, so, so they did drop their fat intake in an, in an absolute sense and also in a relative sense, at least marginally, at least in a, in a marginally here significant way. But what does this mean? So, so what in, does this mean in terms of their dietary patterns? I think you guys probably, you know, you, you've heard this story, you remember it from the certificate program um, in terms of animal versus plant foods. Well, in the paper, they, in the paper, they, um, they 
looked at specific nutrients that were representative of different food groups. So if you, if you look at these nutrients here, fiber, folate, beta carotene, vitamin C, these nutrients represent plant food intake. I think of whole, whole plant food intake. At baseline, they took in 16 grams of fiber. That's pretty pitiful. And, um, and this, I'm sorry, this slide is only looking at the low fat diet. Okay, so this was the failing diet, the diet that didn't work. You know, let's take a closer look at it. They started out with 15, 16 grams of fiber. Over the next 12 months, look what happened to their fiber intake. It did nothing. Okay, if anything here at the end, they were eating slightly less fiber. So they had no increase in dietary fiber as they were decreasing their calorie intake and their and their uh, relative fat intake. Folate, same thing, mostly a uh, re represents a plant food intake. It is present in animal livers and some eggs, but uh, let's take a look at folate, okay? No difference here in 12 months in intake. Beta carotene, again, really no significant difference. Um, it it kind of bounced around here. Uh, vitamin C, Again, not much difference, went from 78 milligrams up to 82, 85. Really no significant increase in vitamin C, beta carotene, folate, or fiber. Okay, so what does this mean? I mean, what, what kind of diet were these people really eating? And uh, to, to make this a little bit more real, as I read this headline, looked at these numbers, I actually kept, a, sort of compulsively kept a little food diary for myself and don't read too much into it. But on a busy day, I, I kept all my, uh, my food intake just to see what the numbers actually translate to. And this was my diet here for a day and, and breakfast. I had a bright bite sized shredded wheat, banana, raisins, almond milk. For lunch, I had uh, instant McDougal um, black bean and lime soup, some leftover chickpea uh, tuna style stuff on a whole wheat flatbread with tomato. I ate an apple. Uh, for dinner, I had another instant McDougal um, minestrone soup. It was a busy day. And uh, mixed in with whole wheat pasta, lots of kale, and a treat of, uh, of a hard cider. Okay, so this for me, I ate perhaps a little bit more beans than normal but uh, that day because of my lunch. But for me, this was a pretty average day, kind of unremarkable in, in my mind. But my dietary intake compared to the low-fat diet, so just... Just look at this. My dietary intake um, on this whole food plant-based diet, my percentage carbohydrate was 77. The low-fat group was 54. Okay, way more carbohydrates. Um, I, because of all the whole wheat and beans, I actually had a, a, a relatively high uh, protein intake, about 15% of my calories. They had even higher. Look at this difference. My overall fat intake as a percent of calories, 8% of my calories came from fat. For them, it was third. the low-fat arm had 30% of their calories from fat. And here's the biggie, okay? On my diet, I took in 71 grams of fiber uh, in that day compared to uh, their intake of 15. So enormous differences between sort of a whole food plant-based diet day and what we're talking about, the low-fat diet. So I don't mean to say all this to suggest we throw out the study, that it was useless, that, you know, go back to the drawing board. I, I don't believe in that kind of approach, sort of tear down approach. I think we can learn from something from this study, but um, we have to be a little bit more careful than the New York Times about what we learned from the study. I would suggest that maybe the headline should be partially eliminating processed carbohydrates will result in more weight loss than eating marginally lower fat versions of the same crappy foods and possibly using less added fats, okay? So um, there's clearly the point here is there's no significant dietary pattern shift. They were just eating less, less overall calories and um, uh, lower fat versions. One final thing, this low carb diet that's being touted everywhere as the great weight loss king. In this group, they lost, uh, these people started out very overweight, actually obese, their BMI was 35.2, um, and their average weight was 212. They had a lot of weight to lose. They lost about 11 to 12 pounds in a year. Um, this is not exactly comparable, but just as a relative point, uh, Dr. Esselstyn in his recent study 
showed that uh, people on a whole food plant-based diet after about three and a half years, his patients um, lost almost 20 pounds uh, and their starting weights are unavailable. This number in a relative sense may actually be more impressive.